I'm Ashling. I'm a researcher at Definity. I'm Austin Fothery. Uh, I'm here in East Denver, representing a number of organizations from uh, Origin Foundation, Penn Industrial, and IC Devs, talking all across Web3, trying to inform people about the internet computer and learn where we can start plugging this thing in to really make Web3 go. How has your week been so far? Exhausting, yeah, uh, but fun. So, anything cool you saw around? What are the main uh, well talking points you find? Everybody's into L2s. Every every literally everyone has their own L2. Um, so that's been fun because I don't know how they're all supposed to eventually work together, but I guess we figure that out figure that out over the next few years. What about you? What's the coolest thing you've seen so far? I saw a lot of stuff. Lots of wallets. Lots of wallet as a service, lots of infrastructure, MPC wallets and like pass keys now kind of come into play a bit more, which is really cool. Uh, I think one word actually that keeps coming up that people get excited about is the word that's actually behind us, multi-chain. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize how big of a kind of hot topic it is, but it seems like this is the hot thing this year. So how can... Uh, applications talk across different chains um so maybe we make this the topic of our little chat for sure let's do it um so yeah maybe i start by asking like what does multi-chain mean to you because i think like talking to different people from different ecosystems and i mean either like from research or developers or products or whatever i think everybody has a bit of a different idea of what it is and uh, as it's developing we haven't really converged to a kind of community or industry standard on what it could be. So what does it, what do you think? The world that I want to see is one where it doesn't matter where your asset or your information is. If you want to do something on an application on chain A and your data is over on chain B, you should be able to do that with reasonable guarantees that you are not, uh, the, the data is not moving out from underneath you and that you can respond to the data in an appropriate way. So I can give some use cases specifically uh, with Origin. We want to be able to have our NFTs move across chains and, uh, because they're eyeballs on other chains. We like the IC, that's where we're building. We think everybody should come over here, but until they do, you have to give them a gateway and so being able to cast your NFT and have it maintain the same properties on other chains is something that we're very interested in doing. So being able to write a contract to Ethereum mainnet and sort of cross mint an NFT to mainnet that can then be sold on uh, OpenSea or Blur or you know, one of those that one of those marketplaces, but that will keep the rules that we want to keep to protect creators and to protect the ecosystem and to help build the ecosystem. That's what we want to do. You won't get that with OpenSea. You heard the decision uh, they, in the news. Have they take it, taken it off? I, I, think it's, I think it's the current API, it's voluntary. When you, when you create the sale, you can put the royalties in there, at least with the last API. So I think they're probably going to, I heard something about them not requiring that or Everybody. Yeah, Same. tricky. But that's cool. I mean, uh, yeah, and like your first point is quite funny. Like, I mean, I shouldn't laugh, but it just shows how I don't want to be cliche, but like how early we are. Like when you say, if you have a piece of data on chain A, you should be able to put it on chain B with reasonable guarantees. This seems like such a small ask. Like, yes. uh, and I kind of had, I had to pull myself back from laughing like, oh my God, how have we not even realized this yet? But, uh, but it's true. And I think the use case is very nice. I also think like, given that we're here and building these kind of decentralized infrastructures, I think it's also nice that there are like different chains to write across. And I think not everything should be in one place. And I think that would be also kind of bad actually. And I like that there's a uh, different kind of use cases and different strengths of some other networks and whatever. Like we have the speed and scalability and um, the efficiency, all of this kind of stuff. But um, you know, other people have uh, their other good things elsewhere too. So I think it's really nice to be able to 
topic master. Um, cool. So, I mean, maybe there's a question about how should like people do this kind of cross-chain communication? Like, um, and as I said, like everybody has a different kind of idea of what it means. So should it be the case that like, are there any standards or does anybody have a kind of idea of what's going on yet or? Sure. I haven't seen a lot of standards yet on the IC around cross chains, but that's a wonderful idea and something I, I would really love to get behind. I've been working a lot with the working groups on ICRC 1, 2, 3, 7, 36, 4. We have a number of them that we've been working on and, and I know there's other people working on identity standards. Uh, it would be great to have some cross-chain standards and go ahead and get them declared and get out ahead of the game so that uh, what, what we want is we want simple libraries. So most of my work's on the Matoko side. Uh, we want a MOPS package and we want on the Rust side, we want a cargo package that you can just, you know, add, you know, MOPS add and set up your stable memory and plug it into the class. And now you just get all of this functionality wire up your endpoints and people who know how to use the standard to say, I want to send asset A to chain B uh, will just be, you know, standardize the candid, standardize the function signatures so that it's super easy and a developer has to do just the minimal amount of work to wire everything up. I was talking to some friends last night actually, and they said, I was kind of trying to tease out of them. What are some of the difficulties in kind of building and integrating with chains and like, like the, the whole, um, I mean, building in blockchain world is already kind of complicated enough and now we're making it more and more complicated. And they said exactly this, like that uh, having kind of standardized, like simple to use endpoints, like lots of documentation as well. I think this is something that maybe everybody in the industry kind of lacks a bit because everything is being pushed out so quickly and like uh, you don't kind of take the time to tease out the small details. Um, and there's also likely, and this is a great place to try to reel people into the ecosystem. There are smart contracts on the other end that we need to write as well that we can standardize. So a standard fungi contract that, hey, my canister is going to deploy this ERC-20 that has these special internal things that happen when you burn on the other side that comes back. A lot of the stuff that you all have put into uh, like CKE, uh, there's probably a ton of stuff in there that could be abstracted out, wrapped up, you know, made more standard. Yeah. And, and those are the kinds of things. That's a great way to bring in, you know, a Solana dev and or a group of Solana devs and have them help us write that contract on Solana yeah, yeah. that could cast things over there. And, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll be working through we have a couple exciting initiatives on the IC dev side that we, we've been talking to Infinity about to sort of really strengthen the ecosystem and how we collaborate to get things done that are more on the public good side. Because let's be frank, there, there's not a lot of profit in writing the RPC canister. It's just hard work that has to be done. And if we can find a way to finance that through a group of people, through a DAO, through help from Definity. We really want to put that process in place so that we can. That sounds so nice. And like, I think it's also just kind of nice for a bit of camaraderie and like uh, having like some coordination around different topics. I think uh, it helps the ecosystem generally and it makes it more fun for everyone. It's all coordination and it always has been. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've seen said, uh, uh, over on the Gitcoin side of things. Yeah. Uh, and they, they've done some interesting stuff and I think we can mirror and they've learned a lot of lessons we can not have to relearn. And uh, So there was one thing you said that uh, I liked and I want to actually touch on it again. You said like about the standards, like writing them now and getting ahead of the curve. This is something that I've seen here a lot, like the multi-chain conversation is kind of just starting. And people talk about how to maybe build across chains and this kind of stuff. And actually, I'm like, wait, we already have this. Like, I mean, we have the Bitcoin integration. We have now we can talk to E. Um, soon we'll come, like, we'll do a threshold EDDSA so we can talk to Solana, maybe Cardano and friends. Um, so, I mean, we already kind of have it. And so I think we are quite ahead of the game, maybe already. So we're definitely ahead on the tech on the IC. 
because we could do it. What we haven't done is written down the pattern so that an inexperienced dev or a specialized dev who needs this as a tangential functionality of what they're doing can come in and just wire it up. So very simple pattern is, for instance, a single use addresses. So with TECDSA, you can generate you know, an almost infinite number of addresses for your canister. And you can write your smart contracts so those are only ever used once. So if you do a simple read from an EVM chain and there's tokens there, you know that you can use them and you control them and nobody else will ever be able to control them. And so you can, you can inside your contract state, you can burn this and add that to an output queue as people withdraw, which is, I think is the pattern you all have used in, in uh, BTC, especially probably CK. So writing down that pattern, making it more generic for ERC-20 uh, uh, will be great. And then there's stuff on the data side as well. Uh, a lot of what we want to do, especially with enterprise, as we try to onboard them to Web3, the financial stuff is all great. But we also have the opportunity to just have domain data and securing that cross chains, uh, pushing that across chains can follow the same pattern. So as you commit data, you can actually sort of move that data permissions from address to address in sequential manner. And that's the simple pattern. Get that down. Then we can start doing crazier, crazier patterns. This sounds great, actually. So maybe I ask you one last question before we uh, say goodbye and like actually go around and see some stuff. Yeah. What are you uh, most excited for this year? Like uh, we had a bit of a bear last year. Things seem to be picking up and like uh, atmosphere is quite a bit more positive this year. Yeah. What's your, uh, the vibe is good. What's your, what's your, the, what are you most looking forward to or most excited to see how it plays out? So I think we have an opportunity this year with the IC and I kind of, I have this phrase that echoes in my head as I go around and talk to a lot of these. And it's a little bit of, um, there's a little bit of hubris in it, which I have to discount, but it's this phrase that the IC already does that. And, and I think with this multi-chain stuff, this is the way we can actually show people who are, they're building entire networks to do single features of the IC. Yeah, yeah. And I hope when we're sitting here next year, there's a line outside the booth because they realized that we just ate the functionality of like six of these projects that are around us. Uh, and it's easy and it's scalable and it's decentralizable. And we have a plug and go DAO and, you know, your data is safe and secure. That's, that's, that's what I want to do this next year. So I sit here with you next year and we talk about uh, how many people chose to build on the IC instead of restarting their own networks. And uh, I would be super nice. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Then I guess we say goodbye. Go take a walk around. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, let's do it. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for the conversation. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.